Meanwhile, the district governor, Godwin Obaseki, has said that he would not appeal his unjust disqualification by the governorship primary screening committee of the All Progressive Congress, noting that the action is a mockery of the democratic process. In a statement, the special advisor to the governor of media and communication strategy, Kusoy Osagi, said, We have watched the mockery of democratic process, which Comrade Adams Oshomale is administering and superintending over in our great party, the All Progressive Congress. It has been an unfortunate disheartening and dreadful spectacle, the statement said. Now, the People's Democratic Party has declared that the embattled governor of Edo State, Gov Gov Godwin Obaseki, has not joined its fold. The opposition party's declaration came on the heels of Friday's disqualification of Obaseki ahead of the June 22nd governorship primary of the APC to produce its candidate for the September election and speculations that he had moved to the opposition party. The APC's seven-man screening, screening committee, led by Professor Jonathan Ayuba, has disqualified Obaseki from the process on the grounds of his inability to verify the authenticity of the governor's National Youth Service Corps Discharge Certificate and what it called the governor's defective higher school certificate. But reacting to speculations that Governor Obaseki has joined the PDP to prosecute his ambition to contest the coming election, the PDP said that Obaseki has not joined its fold. And joining us live is political analyst Olu Martins to take a look at some of the issues arising from that state. Good morning, Mr. Martins. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on News on the Hour. Now, very quickly, did you see this coming? Because this is quite unprecedented for an incumbent to be disqualified from participating <laughs> in the primaries. <laughs> very clearly, we saw it coming. If anybody, if any political watcher didn't say that he didn't see this coming, he, it, will, it will be a complete neophyte. First of all, um, if you look at the trajectory, the antecedent of uh, Comrade Adams Oshomole, <clears throat> both as uh, NLC chairman, NLC president, and governor of two time governor of Edo State, his track record has been replete with uh, arbitrariness, with um, recklessness, and uh, without respect uh, for due process. So, what happened yesterday isn't new as far as uh, the historical trajectory of Adams um, Oshomole, uh, as far as you know, he's concerned. Do not forget that uh, a few years ago, Adams Oshomole celebrated his 61st birthday in the evening, uh, in the morning, and by the evening of that same day, he had become um, you know 60. Uh, do not forget that Adams Oshomole also made a retired major. A permanent secretary, you know, in the ministry, uh, in Edo State here. Yeah. So if you look at his trajectory, this is just typical of um, who he is. No NLC president uh, has had increase in petroleum prices as often as it has happened during the time that uh, Adam Soshomole um, held sway. And then if you now look at the fact that this battle, in a manner of speaking, had been between the incumbent governor and the National Party chairman, who is an interested party anyway, if I was to play a game, and the umpire of the game has clearly files out of the um, dressing room, holding the hands and jubilating with my opponent, should I expect a fair contestation? I shouldn't expect a fair contestation. Hmm. Uh, so if a man wants me out of office, and then you know also happens to be my umpire, clearly is that I'm not going to get any kind of uh, justice. When I was growing up, myself and my elder brother, sometimes we share a loaf of bread. And my father had a principle. My elder brother will choose first, being older, but I will be the one that will share it. So you can imagine if my elder brother had to share the bread, I'll also be the one to choose first. He will share it to his um, advantage. So yes, uh, we did see um, you know, this coming. Well, it's not coming as a surprise for those of us who are political uh, watchers, but you know, for every action, like they say in physics, there's an equal and even a bit, uh, there's an opposite and even sometimes more than equal reaction. You can only do what you what you can do. You are not God and you are not the people. Uh, I'm sure that the people will they also react appropriately when the time comes. Well, listening to Adams Oshomala in the clip before your interview, he also said that this decision is subject to the appeal committee. But what's your take with the governor <laughs> refusing to appeal? Is that an admission that the reasons <laughs> given are therefore true? It was before the whole world upon when 
the governor inaugurated the Professor Yuba Screening Committee. He did say, and I want to quote him, that the Screening Committee is the High Court, the Appeal Committee is the Appeal Court, and then the NWC headed by him is the Supreme Court. In other words, he is the Chief Justice of this um, appeal process. So why would the governor, for instance, now want to appeal? They just want to waste his time. The, the national chairman has said, I've got the yam, I've got the knife, I've got the kerosene, I've got the stove, I've got everything um, that whatever you need. So why, why, why do I want to appeal when the man has already said in the final analysis is the Supreme Court? There's no need that, there's no need to appeal. The Nigerian political space is large enough if your own political party, where you had served for four years, this is the first time I'm hearing that an incumbent uh, governor who had qualified to run the ticket of the party four years ago, when he was friends with Adam Shomole, all of a sudden is no longer qualified simply because he's at loggerhead with Adam Shomole, who is now the national party chairman of uh, the party. I just want to remind people that this is how uh, PDP, you know, started from some years ago when uh, Alaji Atuku Abubaka Ulubuka Saraki where Tamino Tambua walked out of the Eagle Square uh, and they called themselves the new PDP and then they formed uh, the alliances that they formed uh, and then before we knew what was happening um, APC, you know, had the PDP had a problem that he had at that time. Okay, yeah, it was it was Rotimi Amechi and his crew that moved out and had the problem that he had, you know, at that time. So the governor has got options. Mm -hmm. Why should he? If I may interject to Olu Martins, we're struggling with that connection. But if you can hear me, what next now for the governor? Uh, is he likely to join PDP, as speculated in some quarters, or join a different party, or back out entirely from running? What's your thought? <coughs> Well, he's, he's got um, options. Do not forget that, as we speak now, uh, the governor is no longer an individual. He's, a go he's the governor of this, and it's an institution. He's a movement. He doesn't just represent himself anymore. He represents a spectrum of um, ideological people who are progressive indeed, and who want a paradigm shift in uh, modus operandi as far as politics is concerned. So I'm sure that uh, consultations are going on, and um, I I'm very sure that in days to come, uh, in the governor's interest to serve the people and to deliver the dividends of democracy on a on a completely new paradigm shift will find you know expression. It is unlikely that the governor is going to back out. It's unlikely that the governor is going to back out. Um, I'm sure that he's going to find um, other alternatives to you know express you know. So whether it is the People's Democratic Party, mm -hmm. you know, only time will um, tell. All right, before I let you go, Lou Martins, what's the feeling out there among the electorate? Are they impressed or disappointed in the ruling party? Well, let me be fair in my objectivity. Of course, you know that in a contestation like this, for those who consider themselves or their principal as the beneficiary of such an injustice and travesty, they must be, you know, happy that at last they have been able to, if you like to put it that way, oust, oust their, you know, major contender. But, you know, uh, the Bible says that if the if um, Satan knew that uh, crucifying the Lord of Glory would result to the duplication of people who are Christ-like, I'm sure he would not have attempted to do it. So on their own side, they probably are rejoicing. But in the streets of uh, Edo State, it is uh, it is gloom. It is uh, mixed feelings. People cannot, you know, understand why performing governor because he's not serving the interest of a few all of a sudden is, you know, ousted from office. So it's just uh, people are quite indifferent. And then, you know, people are feeling disconnected from the political process. It looks like if you're a good man in uh, Nigerian politics, you will not go far. That's just what looks like except you panda to a few persons who think that they own this one is uh, i'm is afraid a, we'll is, have to uh, round it there person. because yeah, the network is, an is person quite will, uh, unfriendly Ulu react in this to come uh, thank you so very much Ulu Martins, for your time uh, we apologize for the quality of the line and do stay safe out there